Hey guys, how's it going? Mr. Mitchell here. In this video, we're going to kick off the rotational motion topic for the advanced tyre physics course by looking at displacement, velocity and acceleration. So let's get started. Just as a little introduction to this topic, kinematic relationships, it says here that throughout this course, calculus techniques will be used. These techniques are very powerful and a knowledge of integration and differentiation will allow a deeper understanding of the nature of physical phenomena. So you're going to need your integration and differentiation knowledge from higher maths. And it says here that kinematics is the study of the motion of points, making no reference to what causes the motion. So we're going to be considering objects to be points. And then it says in what follows, differential calculus notation is used to represent rate of change. And rate of change just means something with respect to time. For displacement, velocity and acceleration, we're now going to look at the definitions of each and then how we can represent them as equations. So the first one is displacement, and it says here that the displacement s of a particle is the length and direction from the origin to the particle. So we assume that our motion starts from the origin at a time of t equals zero, and our displacement will be the distance and the direction from the origin to that finished point where the particle is. And also a very important point is the fact that the displacement of the particle is a function of time. So we can write this as s is equal to f of t. So that just means function of the time. So function f of the time t. And that just means that our object is moving with respect to a time t. The next one is velocity and it defines velocity here as the rate of change of displacement. So all we mean by the rate of change is with respect to time. So another way of saying this is that velocity is the displacement per unit time or the displacement each second. We could therefore write average velocity in this form here. Phi average equals delta s over delta t. So that just means change in s and change in t remember. So we're saying here that the average velocity is equal to the change in displacement over the change in time. Now this is the equation that you've actually already used at National 5 and higher level for velocity, displacement and time. But if we wanted to consider the instantaneous velocity, then we need to look at a much shorter displacement over a much shorter time. So this is found by taking the limit of the function as delta t tends to zero. So we now want to consider what happens to this velocity when this denominator in the fraction delta t tends towards the limit of zero. Or in other words, just becomes really small. Well, if we do that, then we can write it in this form here. So we have instantaneous velocity is equal to ds by dt. So that's just saying that the instantaneous velocity is equal to the rate of change of displacement. And you'll see that it's with respect to time. So that means that if you're given a displacement s as a function of time t, then you can can find the instantaneous velocity by doing the first derivative of that displacement with respect to time. Moving on to acceleration now, acceleration is defined as the rate of change of velocity. So remember rate of change is just with respect to time. So another way of saying this is the change in velocity per unit time or the change in velocity each second. Average acceleration, just like we did for average velocity, could be written as a average equals delta v over delta t, or average acceleration is equal to the change in velocity over the change in time. And again, this is just what we used in National 5 and higher physics to calculate acceleration. Instantaneous acceleration, however, is found by taking the limit of the function as delta t tends to zero, just like we did for the average velocity to find an instantaneous velocity. So we can do the same thing for acceleration. So considering this denominator in the fraction delta t as it tends to zero or just becomes really small, then the instantaneous acceleration a is equal to dv by dt. So that means the acceleration is equal to the rate of change of velocity and the d by dt again shows that it's with respect to time. So if you had an expression for velocity with respect to time, then you could find the acceleration by doing the first derivative of that velocity with respect to time or the first differential. Now it's also the case that acceleration is the second differential of displacement. And that's because acceleration is the first differential of velocity, but velocity is also the first differential of displacement. So they're all actually related to each other as a function of time. So to show you why this is the case mathematically, we can say that since a equals dv by dt, we've just seen that, and v equals ds by dt, which we saw earlier, then the acceleration is equal to dv by dt. And if we then substitute in for v and take the d by dt outside the brackets, then we've got d by dt of ds by dt, just because that's how we express velocity v in terms of displacement. And this means that we have a second differential here. So this is equal to d squared s by dt squared. So we now have two ways of expressing acceleration and they're in this box here to show that they're important. So it says here that a is equal to dv by dt, which is also equal to d squared s by dt squared. So it's helpful to remember both of these expressions 
expressions. So we have the acceleration is equal to the first derivative of the velocity, which is equal to the second derivative of the displacement, or a equals dv by dt is equal to d squared s by dt squared. And the last thing to note is that a change in velocity may result from a change in direction. So for example, if an object's travelling with a constant speed, it can still have a changing velocity if it's also changing direction, because remember velocity is a vector quantity, so it has a magnitude and a direction. So if the magnitude stays the same but the direction changes, then that means that the velocity must change overall. And we'll see this later in the topic on uniform motion in a circle. That's all from me folks, I hope you found the video useful. If you did, drop a like, subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.